Hello all, welcome to this video. This should hopefully be a quick one, I'm kitten still climbing around like crazy, um, where we look at factorizing and solving quadratics, the methods that we can use and when to use them. So more so actually looking at when to use them. I'm not gonna go into how to do them explicitly. Right here, so let's get started. So we'll first start with the idea of factorizing then moving towards solving um, and talk about the, what the clear difference is between them. Let's fix that up. That'll do. Okay. So we are asked to let's get color. Okay. If we have any sort of problem where we have to factorize or solve quadratics, um, these are the steps we're going to work through. Um, the very first one and I probably haven't actually made this clear enough or drummed it in to enough, is we need to always try and first see if we can take a common factor. Okay. Um, doesn't matter if you think it looks like it's completing the square, it looks like inspection, doesn't matter. You first need to see if you can take the common factor. Okay, always. Um, it'll generally make your life a lot simpler. Um, and especially today where we're looking at those modeled problems where it was like why or in our case, it was a equals w or negative w squared minus 24w or whatever it was. Because there was no constant on the end, we can always take out um, the w there as a common factor, um, which is really handy when it comes to using the null factor law and such, which we'll talk about later on. But yes, always take out the common factor first. From there, we split into two different branches. Now we have, when we're in polynomial form, we have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That's our standard polynomial form. Whatever the number in front of the x squared is, is a. Whatever's in front of the x is b. Whatever's the constant at the end, we call it c. Now the two forks that we're going down, they depend on if a is equal to one or if a is not equal to one okay. and we're going to go down these two branches now if we have if we go down the branch where a is equal to one we then our very first thing that we're going to do is try and factorize via inspection first okay we'll try inspection and that is say if we have uh y equals x squared plus 3x minus 4, we're looking for two numbers, two numbers, and we'll call them e and f, okay? We need two numbers where e times f is equal to negative 4, and e plus f, let me actually change this, E times F is equal to uh, C, so our constant on the end, which in this case is negative 4. And then E plus F is equal to our B value, which in this case is 3. Those are our two magic numbers, and that always fat follows on that Y is equal to X, X plus E plus F. That's our inspection. Two numbers that multiply to give the last number, add to give the middle number, and then we can write it like that. So in our case, we get y is equal to x, x, x. What's our magic numbers? Well, negative 4 and adds to give me 3, so that'll be plus 4 and negative 1. Plus 4 times by negative 1 is negative 4, plus 4 add negative 1 is 3, so that works. So that's inspection. What is the first method that we should try if a is not equal to 1? Well, in that case, we want to use the cross method. It would be the first thing you try and use. So an example, y equals, and I should have had an example loaded first. Let's just see if I can make one up quickly. Uh, plus 4x. Plus 2. 
that'll work. Okay, so cross method, because we have an x squared to x squared, we have a coefficient other than one in front of the x squared. We first try the cross method. So I'm gonna draw my cross in there. And I put two factors of the first term under the left-hand side of the cross. So for two, the only things I can use is 2x and 1x. And then for the two over here, um, this problem actually isn't going to work out. Right, I need to change that middle to a... No, no, this will work fine. Um, the What are the factors of two? Well, again, only one and two that I can use. So under the right-hand side, I'm going to put a 1 there and a 2 there. Now we multiply along the cross, so multiply along that cross that way. And in that case, that gives us 2x. And multiplying along the other cross, 1x times 2 also gives me 2x. And I need to add those together, and this gives me 4x, which is the middle number, which works. Okay, so the end goal is we need to be able to get that middle number there. Um, so that works. And then we finally write them as factors going across. So while we multiplied along the diagonal, along the line, we write our factors as directly horizontally across the cross. So we get, in this case, y is equal to 2x plus 2, bracket, 1x plus 1 which we could, oh, my cat's trying to eat my pen, which we could simplify that second bracket a bit further. X plus one. Now I've just realized I broke the cardinal rule with this cross method one, just because I wanted to show the method. Looking at that, I didn't try and do what I could straight off the bat. And in this case, I could have taken a common factor out of two, um, out of that quadratic and then used what was inside the brackets, I could use used inspection instead. Um, so just to show that how I could have come over this way, I could have instead written as y equals 2 bracket x squared plus 2x plus 1, and then done inspection on this inside bit. Which would have turned out we ended up with 2x plus 1 bracket x plus 1 for the cross method. Okay. So that's our first methods we go to. Now these only work if we have some really nice numbers. Um, in this case, integers. You could, if you're really skilled, have done um, with some fractions there in there, but it could be quite difficult. But again, these are for quickly. If they are readily apparent to you, you go to these. Otherwise, you go straight onto the next methods, which, okay. If it, neither of those two work, and if we're on the inspection side, we use completing the square. And if we're over this side, we do the quadratic formula. So completing the square um, is that we don't have enough time to look at the whole process do it, but it's that idea we have a magic number, we square it, oh sorry, we halve it, then square it, we add it, subtract it, um, and then it allows us to get a perfect square at the start, and then if we're lucky we get difference of perfect squares. So we, we generally, why would we do completing the square? Um, because it partway through it gives us the turning point form of the equation, um, which when we get to the stage where it's like y equals x plus 3 all squared minus 4, that's called turning point. That's our turning point x coordinate. That's our turning point y coordinate. So that's really handy once we get to that step. And then if we factorize that one further, we get that x plus 3 all squared minus 2 squared. We now have different perfect squares. So we get x plus 3 minus 2, x plus plus 2. Remembering here that these signs, we make them different. Whatever the second bit is, we put them behind different signs. 
Um, and in this case, we could have simplified this further. So we get x plus 1 and x plus 5. So I haven't shown how to get to this step. You'll have to go back and check the notes, what we've done on the completing the square method up to that point. So that's handy. Um, that's a really handy reason for using completing the square. Um, or when inspection is not obvious to you. Or when you end up with fractions. When you have fractions, generally you can't do it via inspection, so you have to use completing the square. So we use it then. Quadratic formula over here again, if we have a is not equal to one, or something that's just not looking like it's working. So for example, we might have y equals three x squared plus seven x minus twelve. I look at that, I have a coefficient here so a is not equal to one i've maybe tried to do this using the cross method i don't know if the cross method could work or not in this example but it, it may but if you haven't found that it works we jump straight away to um x is equal to um negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Um, where, breaking down this equation, we want to remember that our turning point x is told by this first bit, negative b, on the 2a. That actually tells us our turning point x coordinate and the remainder of it is the discriminant. So the discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac. B, the discriminant technically does not include the square root sign. Just to be really clear, the discriminant does not include the square root sign. And we know that if the discriminant is greater than 0, we have two solutions. If the discriminant is equal to 0, we have one solution. And if the discriminant is less than 0, we get no solutions. Oh, that's my kitten playing with a ping pong ball if that sounds coming through. The other thing I want to say, sorry, about the completing the square is it also tells us when there's a hint when there's no solution. So if we get y equals x plus 3, like the example above, minus 4, if that's negative, that's negative, then we can factorize. Okay. If we get y equals x squared plus 3 plus 4, we have that. We can't use dops. Can't use this here. Okay. Because that's positive we can't factorize further. So just keep that in mind for completing the square. Finally too, if you struggle at completing the square, we can also come across this way. The quadratic formula, okay, when we check can conditional upon what the discriminant is, the quadratic formula will always work. Like I said in class, that's what I used in high school. Um, because I knew it would always work. I would always check the discriminant first. If the discriminant was equal to zero or greater than zero, I knew great, there's going to be, I can factorize it and I can go from there. Um, so I just learned the quadratic formula, but if you can do the inspection cross method, you'll get to the answer a lot quicker most of the time. Finally, what is the difference between factorizing and solving? Factorizing versus solving. Okay. Factorizing is just right in brackets. Okay. We can do that. Um, we can do it to either equations or expressions. Okay. 
solving okay, is um, the process of finding the unknown, most of the time in our case it's x, that makes the equation true. So in the case above up here, okay, we could have used this to find out what is the value of x that will make this true, and I actually needed to let that equal zero. Okay, so most of the time it's when the equation equals zero. Is most of the time we do it. Okay, and the key thing hopefully you're starting to notice is that I've said it's when the equation is equal to zero when the equation is true. We, we can't solve an expression. If you're just told x squared plus 3x minus 4, you can't solve that. To solve is you need to know it equals something. This may equal to 5. Well, then you need to, once you have it equal to 5, you can now, because you have it equal to something, you know you're finding the values of x that make this whole equation true. Um, so that's the big difference between factorizing is you can factorize something that has an equal sign in it. That's completely fine. That's just writing as brackets, but then we use that factorizing generally to solve quadratics using the very last thing, which is the null factor law, which says any two things multiplied together, doesn't matter what they are, if they equal zero, then if that, then a equals zero or b equals zero. Most of the time we see it in the form of maybe x plus 2, x plus 3 equals 0. This bit here, that's our a. This bit here is our b. Either the x plus 2 is equal to 0 has to be, or the x plus 3 has to be equal to 0. One of those two cases has to be true. We sometimes see, and a lot of people don't see it, is say if we get maybe m, m, uh, m minus 3 equals 0. This is still this is still something times by something else. If something times by something else equals 0, so in this case we get m equals 0 or m minus 3 equals 0. So that's a quick refresh. Went a little bit longer than I want to, but that's an overview of when we use the different methods. First things first, we always try and take the common factor though. I can't stress that enough because it'll make your life a whole lot easier. In this, my first example, I could have taken the common factor in this cross method example and actually been able to do it via inspection. Um, so yeah, inspection, completing the square, you can only do if a is equal to one or you've already taken it out as a common factor. I'll leave you for that. See you in class.